as Russia continues its invasion of Ukraine and as Western sanctions continue to take up the heat on the world economy, now is the time to start looking at your investment portfolio to see the proper ways that you can balance it to protect your assets during a global conflict. Now, even before Russia began its invasion of Ukraine, the US economy was already slipping quite a bit, with US inflation rates skyrocketing for the last few months. And now things are looking like they're going to get even worse, with all of these sanctions on Russia being extremely dramatic, with all of them being the key supplier of key commodities such as oil. And this is something that is going to affect European markets the most, with over 80% of Europe's imports relying on Russia to some extent, with oil rates starting to tick around $150 per barrel. Now, fortunately, history has shown us that global conflicts and wars can affect the stock market in both positive and negative ways. And although the markets are pricing for the absolute worst case scenarios, there are a lot of questions that still need to be answered, like how long is this going to go on for and to what total extent? as these are major questions that need to be taken into account when balancing your investment portfolio. And that's why today we are going to be going through the best assets that you can invest in during times of global conflict in order to either preserve your portfolio or even outperform the market in its entirety. So the first thing that we naturally are going to have to do is look at how the stock market is going to be impacted by these events. Now on February 24th, investors did get a glimpse of just how dramatic this invasion is going to be on the global markets. And unsurprisingly, the travel and leisure markets were amongst the worst performing during this time. And some of the worst of these were some pretty big names such as Expedia, as well as the casino operator Las Vegas Sands Corporation, and of course, major airlines, such as United. Now, in addition to these travel stocks, the bank sectors were also hit pretty hard as well. And because of this volatility, some people are speculating that the Federal Reserve is going to be forced to respond and they're going to have to be more conservative on their raising of interest rates in order to be able to better combat rising inflation rates. Now, just on February 24th, the S&P did originally drop about 2%, and for the year to date, it is now down over 11%. And that is even with a few days of rebound that are in there, and it looks like as the crisis continues to worsen, the trajectory is still trending predominantly downward. However, if history is any good indicator of how markets generally react to these types of situations, then fortunately, this environment may be relatively short-lived. Now, from a global geopolitical perspective, most of these events actually do not last too long, at least in terms of market conditions, as a lot of this volatility does create opportunity for investors. Now, if you don't believe me, you can take a look at this data from 1941, which is tracking the S&P 500, and over the previous 21 geopolitical events, there has been an average drawdown of about 5%, and that's including all of the major U.S. history events, including Pearl Harbor, attack, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and 9-11. Now despite all of these dramatic events, the S&P has taken a relatively short period to rebound, with the average rebound time only taking about 45 days. However, in this situation, some of these events are a little bit more specific, and that is going to be the looming energy crisis as this specific conflict between Russia and Ukraine is going to have a dramatic upset on oil production across the world. However, despite this tragic news, many economists are still pretty firm on the positive headwinds that the US economy is going to be experiencing in the future, and that is despite all of the unique problems that this situation is providing. So with that said, let's take a look at some of the best stocks that you are going to be able to purchase during these times of volatility, and it should not be a surprise to anyone that the majority of these investments are going to be in the defense sectors. And even though this crisis has only really kicked off in the last two weeks or so, a lot of these companies have seen pretty significant upticks in their share prices in this relatively short period. That, however, does mean that there still is going to be a lot of room to grow within them. Now, the first one that we can take a look at is L3 Harris Technologies with ticker LHX, which gained more than 4% on just Thursday morning, which was the day of the invasion. And in a similar fashion, Northrop Grumman also gained 2% on the morning of the invasion. And if we look at the year to date for both Lockheed Martin and Raytheon Technologies, we're going to see that they are up 7% year over year. And that does mean there is a pretty dramatic gap between the S&P's negative 10% slump. And this demonstrates just how well these companies have been performing given the S&P's negative slump over the last year. And it's not just defense stocks that are benefiting from this crisis as the energy sector has also seen a significant boost in their share prices as a result of the looming energy shortages 
in the massive uptick in demand. And as a matter of fact, if you look at 11 out of the 12 best performing stocks on the S&P 500 this year, they are going to be within the oil and energy sectors. And the top companies that you're going to see within this category are going to be the heavy hitters in the oil industry, such as Halliburton & Co., as well as Chevron. And if you also take a look at Occidental Petroleum, you're going to see that all of these are up over 30% year on year. Now, it's not just stocks that have been affected by this crisis, as commodities have also taken a pretty significant hit and they have their own strategy when it comes to investing during times of geopolitical conflict. Now, just on the day of invasion alone, petroleum prices shot up over 8%, putting the price of one barrel of oil at over $100. And from there, we are now approaching over $150 a barrel. And this is something that you should expect to continue to rise in the foreseeable future, especially since Russia is now threatening to cut off the Nord Stream 1 oil pipeline, which does provide a significant amount of oil to Europe. And this is going to be a major incident if they do decide to make these maneuvers, as Russia is the second largest oil producer in the entire world. Now, according to economists, rising oil prices are a significant burden, even if you are not heavily invested in oil or have an electric car so you don't care what it costs at the pump, as these are acting like a tax basically on all types of profits for companies, as it unfortunately does take fuel and energy to be able to provide all other types of services. So this is something that is most definitely going to hit the margins of all different companies no matter their asset classes. And this is something that is massively going to hurt profitability in the long run. With that said, however, that does not mean that there are no commodities that are suitable for investing right now. And it's probably not going to be surprising to you that a lot of crude oil companies are going to be your best bet for this type of investment. However, there is still a lot of risk associated with investing in these types of companies because if the oil market is dramatically cut off by sanctions or the production of oil ceases, then these are going to have a negative effect on your portfolio and you can see significant losses that well outpace the rest of the market. However, there is a little bit of good news as President Biden is planning on using some of the US's emergency reserves, and this should help ease some of the supply chain backup, as well as ease a lot of the prices at the pump. Now, if you have been paying attention to any of the headlines recently, then you are almost certainly aware that wheat and corn prices have also significantly increased since the time of the invasion. And this is another sector of the commodities market that is definitely something to be on the watch for, as Ukraine is one of the largest farming sectors for Europe. So as their farming industry continues to be disrupted, there is most definitely going to be a shortage of these commodities coming into next year. Now, fertilizer is a commodity that for many of you is probably pretty unexpected expected, but Russia is actually one of the largest producers of fertilizer in the world, and more importantly, they are the biggest exporter to India, and this is naturally going to have a pretty dramatic effect on crop production all over the world, as as these sanctions kick in, Russia is going to be significantly hindered in their ability to produce and then export fertilizer, and as a result, many farmers around the world, especially around Asia and India, are going to have significant effects to their crop production capabilities. So although many of these might seem like pretty good investments for the short term here, I actually do not think these are the best given the uncertainty surrounding all of them. And I think right now your best bet is probably going into gold. And naturally gold is holding its own very well during this crisis. And as a ton of investors are piling into it as a safe haven, it is up over 10% this year going for $1,800 an ounce. And if we take a look at the SPDR Gold Trust ETF, we're going to see that it is almost hitting its all-time highs. And once again, gold is proving its dominance over other assets such as crypto, with Bitcoin being down over 18% year to date. Now let's also take a look at the cash and bond sectors, which historically have been less risky than what you would see in the stocks and commodities markets. However, the drawback that you're going to get with these is that they are not going to have as high of potential returns. However, that being said, in the last few months, bond markets in the US are proving to be less of safe havens than we naturally thought they would be, as the iShares core bond aggregate is indicating that they are down over 3% this year. And one reason for this is something that I've talked about a lot in my previous videos, and that is the Federal Reserve shift in bond rates in the next year. And as these interest rates are expected to continue to increase, they're going to become less attractive for a lot of investors. And naturally, this is going to lead to less demand, which is going to directly affect their returns. So if you are interested in going ultra safe or what was once considered ultra safe and get into the bond market, 
is probably best to look at the short-term bond yields instead of looking at the 30-year plus ones. So for example, the Vanguard short-term bond yield, which is ticker BSV, is probably a really good bet right now as it offers broad diversification against a lot of short-term bond options. Now, even though you may not be thinking it, cash is still very much an option because right now the US dollar is surprisingly very strong. And if we take a look at the US dollar currency market, we are going to see that the US dollar is up 7% year over year and how this index calculates the value of the dollar is they're comparing it to all other major currencies globally. So obviously holding this cash is not going to give you the explosive returns that you could get by investing in the more risky commodity and stocks. This is a pretty safe bet while well, you're probably not going to be losing out on a lot of money relative to inflation. So that's all I have for you today about investing during war. Let me know what you think down in the comments and with that said guys I will see you in the next one.